going on guys? Today we're going to get into something that for many of you, it could be too late. And what I'm talking about is going to college. If you're in your 50s, um, college may be an option. But what I want to talk about is how poor people are giving their children the wrong information about college. And this realization happened um, just this weekend when I was visiting some friends and they have a, a child who's attending Georgia Tech. And, you know, we were just sitting around having dinner, just talking, and I was talking to the young man and he's a junior at Georgia Tech and he lives at home. And, uh, you know, he was just talking about as a junior, He's being recruited by the FBI. He's being recruited by Apple. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. And he's being recruited by several companies. Now, what is this young man taking? He is taking computer science and he's in a lab where they're focusing on ultimate international cybersecurity. Not just cybersecurity, but international cybersecurity. And he's doing really well in that. And he is, you know, he told his dad, he's like, I come out of school, I'm looking at a job that's gonna pay me 150. 150 right out of school. And uh, everyone in his class is in the same boat. Everyone. And I'm just sitting there like, and then I have another friend and after, you know, I had dinner with this young man and just, you know, he, his future is locked in. His future is locked in. And uh, I have another friend and I called him and asked him about his daughter who's going to uh, LSU. And because of her exposure and her background, she's taking a STEM degree. <clears throat> Same thing. It's like, yeah, you know, she's been recruited. Job's going to pay between 80 and 95,000. And I'm just looking at this and I'm seeing this and I just kind of did a poll to with all my friends who had college kids in college and I just started asking them and all of them went to school and took the hard degrees. Now this is the bad information that poor people get. Just get a degree. Baby, just get a degree. How many athletes have we seen who promised grandma <clears throat> that they would graduate? Just graduate. Now, <clears throat> if you're an NFL player and you want to get a degree in basket reading to say you got your college degree, okay, that works. Because you're an NFL player. You're making billions of dollars in a job <laughs> that you only work half a year. Well, maybe. I would say maybe that's not true because the way the NFL is today, these guys have to train year round, have to prepare year round. So it's a full-time job. You're just playing half the year. And I, I look back and I went and talked to some of my friends who, cause like I, I have classifications. I have my business owner friends and I have the people that I grew up with and went to high school with and uh, I just kind of reached out to some of my high school friends on Facebook and asked them what was going on and, you know, how were their kids doing? Seventy-five percent of these kids are struggling. They have a college degree and they're struggling. Oh yeah, and moved back home with us, you know. And I'm just seeing this over and over and over again that the I'm going to get a college degree for my grandma rhetoric is not good servicing our young people well. It's just not working well. Like I said, I, I, like I said, I've seen the number of athletes who wanted to get a degree because they promised their grandma. And once again, if you're looking at grandma, someone that's 70, 80, 90 years old, um, in her time, a degree was very special. In her time, like my grandmother. My grandmother was a school teacher. My grandmother had a degree. My grandmother had a degree. 
So that was really, really rare back then. But today, so many people have what I call useless degrees. They went to school, they spent four to five years there, they walked across the stage, they got their degree, and they uh, work in a restaurant. Uh, they do a job that doesn't need a degree because I, I need to do some more research because I knew the research where I did this uh, video. But I am assured that if I dive into the research, I'm going to see that STEM degrees, medical degrees, uh, mech engineering degrees would represent less than 10% of all degrees issued. I am willing to bet money. I am willing to bet money because when this dude was sitting there telling me he was he was chewing on some steak and he was like, you know, I like Apple, but he said it would be fun to work for the FBI. But he says, I'm gonna make more money at Apple. I'm like, because they think he says FBI salaries topped out at like 80 and he walks into Apple, he's gonna walk in at 150. So, you know, um, I feel just after having a conversation with this young man, his, his mind is locked on Apple. You know, he, he, he gets to work for Apple. Uh, he, he said there's, they have various locations where he can work and he thinks that's what he's gonna do when he graduates next year. He's gonna have a job. I mean, essentially, he said Apple came after him really hard. Oh yeah, Apple flew him out to the Hampus headquarters. He's a junior. All right, Apple ain't spending no money on the plane ticket for someone that they're not seriously considering hiring. They're not doing that. And I'm just sitting there like, and I'm just listening to this and I'm looking at the dichotomy. And once again, like me, I don't have a degree. I dropped out of school my junior year and I was pretty much doing business and biology. So for me, not graduating, actually, I'm gonna tell you a little story about that in a minute. Not graduating worked out well for me, but because I'm a business owner, uh, I'm not in the employment for it. I've not, I've not had a job job in 26 years. I think 25 or 26 years. I've not had a job job. A job, I've, I've not worked for anyone in the last 25, 26 years. So for me, it has worked out. But I feel for many people who are going to school, going to college, they should stay in college. They should get the most, the hardest degree that they can get. Because I remember years and years ago, and I want to tell you that story. I'm going to tell you that story, and I'm going to tell you another story. I have a friend who graduated from Grambling, and uh, he got into real estate. This friend of mine who graduated from Grambling, uh, he was working at Quick Trip as a manager. He graduated from Grambling, working as a, you know, as a manager at Quick Trip. And then um, he got into real estate, and then he moved to Louisiana after Katrina. And he got into a lot of real estate, and that's how he made a lot of money. And we used to be Facebook friends, and he saw how well I was doing, and he became somewhat of a hater. And he started talking uh, smacks about what I was doing. And in a Facebook, in a, in a post that I put up, he said, you know, if Lyndon had gone to college and gotten a degree, he would be doing better. At the time, I was making maybe 30000 a month, maybe $25,000, $30,000 a month. And uh, I went out to Nor uh, Louisiana and I saw him. And there ain't no way he was making 30,000 a month. He wasn't even close to it. You know, he was making maybe 10. And I, I, I kind of laughed because here was this person who didn't have a degree that was making three times the money he was making. 
Now, I've lost touch with this person and um, he would lose his mind if he knew what I was doing now. He would lose his mind. He would lose his mind. But years and years ago when I was at Fort McPherson, um, there used to be three of us with the same line, same name. It was kind of funny. And uh, one of my um, peers in the military was attending Georgia Tech. And he had a 2.5 GPA. And he said when he walked in, people got on their knees and said, we're not worthy. Just to illustrate how hard these schools are. Like if you graduate MIT with a 2.5 or 2.7, you will be recruited. <laughs> they will come for you. They will come looking for you. You will have a job before you graduate MIT. You will have a job. And one of the things that people don't understand, because like just having dinner with them and talking to this young man, he is not worried about his future. He's not worried about it. Because one of the things that I look at is the dark web. There's a lot of stuff that's going on in the dark web, a lot of stuff that's going on. And, um, you know, he was talking about some of the stuff they were doing. And one of the things they had to do was a project on a defunct dark website called Alpha Bay. And they had to go in and do some things and figure out how to hack Alpha Bay. Because this is, this is why the FBI really, really wants this guy. What they're doing, he, you know, he's a hacker. Yes, he's a student at Georgia Tech, but he can hack. He, he's like, he talking about, sometimes he and his friends just hacking this shit for fun. He's a hacker. He can, he can get into, you know, and this is why Apple wants him so bad. Because what do you need? You need a hacker to create facilities and systems to prevent hackers from getting out because this guy, you know, because uh, one of the things he did when he was at his Apple, they had him do some and he hacked into their system in like 10 minutes. And they were like blown away. They were shocked. They were blown away, but he hacked their system in 10 minutes. And he said, ever since then, he gets an email from them every week. They're like, hey, how you doing? How you doing, buddy? How you doing? Yeah, he's a hacker. And this is a job for the future. He could be considered, you know, like, it, it, it's just kind of funny. I feel, and I'm gonna say this, cause I've known this guy for a while. I feel the reason that he isn't a hacker hacker in a criminal is because his father's rich. And <clears throat> they actually give him whatever he wants. He has a BMW. He lives at home. Whenever he needs money, they give it to him. So he has no need to commit crime. <clears throat> but with his skill sets, he can make a lot of money as a hacker. A lot of money. And I'm just sitting here looking at this and his father's a nerd, his mother's a nerd, and he's a nerd. And you know, I'm just looking at it. What's that saying? The rich get richer, the poor get poor. I'm just seeing it. I'm just seeing it because, you know, when I do my little research using my friends, I don't tell them what I'm doing. <laughs> I just like, hey man, you know, what's going on? It's been a long time since we talked. What's going on with you? That's how I come at them, to get this research and intel. Oh, we doing fine? How the children? Oh man, Ann had to move back in with us, man. You know, she got two kids. Ann has a degree in sociology. So Ann has a degree, had to move back in with the rents. And I'm just looking at this and um, I'm going to uh, meet up with this young guy because I'm gonna have him, I'm gonna see what he can do in the hacking world. But once again, I feel that poor people are led or fed a bunch of BS. Just get a degree, just graduate, baby. Just 
get a degree. Just graduate, baby. Get you a degree. No. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. That, that ain't the message. You need to be in STEM. Aaron Clary, Asshole Consulting. He's got all books about this stuff. You need to be in STEM. You need to be in mechanical engineering, engineering, computer science. You need to be in something that is hard. You need to be in something that is hard where it takes you hours to do your homework properly. You, that's what you need to be doing. Because one of the things that I am seeing here is the wealth distribution is very much the same. Because let's go ahead and talk about this young man who's gonna come out of Georgia Tech, get a job making 150K, probably be 22, 150K a year, 22, all right? His parents are rich. So when they die, he's going to inherit millions. He's going to inherit millions. And he's going to be in a very, like, I have a feeling this guy's gonna start a company. I just have a feeling. Because he's gonna work for Apple to punch his ticket. And what do I mean by that? When you work for Facebook, Apple, like you could work for three of these companies and then you could go out and it's like, hey, I work for them, I work for them. And you could literally raise millions of dollars based upon your pedigree, based upon your experience level, millions of dollars to start a startup. And I, I have a feeling at some point this guy's going to start some type of cybersecurity startup and he's going to, he's going to make millions. And he's already set. <laughs> he's already set. You know, he's a very nice, uh, polite, nice dude. And, you know, cause I was sitting there, cause you know, I talked to him a little bit on the side about game and stuff. And I was like, look, you're going to be the dude. You need to walk like the dude. You need to act like the dude. And what you should do is only approach women that you have a strong interest in. You should not approach anyone just cause she will give you the pussy. That's what I told him. I said, you should set your sights very high. And he, he's got him a, on the scale of one to 10, his girlfriend's a 10. Cause he just walked up to her and started talking to her. And he's like, man, you're right. She with it. So once again, I feel that poor people are feeding their children some BS about college. Just go get a degree. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Like this weekend, and I just came to understand how harmful and dangerous that information is. Uh, even with myself, when I left high school and joined the military, my ASFAB score was so high, I could have had any job the Army had. He said, whatever you want, you, any job we have, you can do. And because I didn't have any mentors, I didn't have anyone to tell me what to pick, I could have been doing um, crypto, which is security. I could, I could have went to crypto and all my guys, because I was at Fort McPherson, and all of the crypto guys were in the barracks next to us. And all those guys got out of the army making 50 to $90,000 in the early 90s, about, about the mid 90s. 50K in the mid 90s, I think that's like 100K right now. I, I gotta do the inflation calculator, but that's what they got out because they had that experience. And I feel this is the, the cycle of poverty. Hear me out. You don't know anything. Your mama don't know anything. Your daddy didn't know anything. And y'all have no one in the family that knows anything. So everyone is at this, this low ceiling, right? And that low ceiling produces low ceilings. It's like, you don't have no one to talk to. Like this young man, he has me, he has his father. Uh, his father has a multitude of high net worth friends. His, he lives in a resource rich environment where he can get advice, he can get game. And like I said, dude drives like, what is that BMW? 
It's an M3. He drives a BMW M3. He goes to Georgia Tech. He lives at home. And like his dad, once again, his dad put him on all his credit cards. So dude is in college with like an 800 credit score. <laughs> I mean, just, it's just, it's just coming like that for this dude. His, his future is set. And I feel for that intelligent, hardworking young black man or young black woman that's growing up in the ghetto, because they're growing up in an environment where they don't know what they don't know. And they, they'll go out and get some BS degree work really hard getting this BS degree, graduate with a high GPA, and not be prepared to do shit in the world. I consistently, continually see this paradigm over and over and over again. Smart people, intelligent people. If I feel that if these people had the right guidance, it would be, the difference in their futures would be night and day would be night and day. So once again, the money is in STEM, computer science, engineering, medicine, uh, law, law is hit and miss. But if you go ahead and get you a computer scientist degree with a specialization, with a specialization in security or hacking, you coming out of school making six figures. Now, Dude did tell me, he said his homework is a bitch. He's like, because I remember one night he was home and he spent eight hours working on one project. It was not like, he, 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 he's not a party guy, you know? He goes out with his girlfriend, goes out to dinner and stuff, but he says, I don't, I don't have time to party. I don't have time, you know, he's like, he hangs out with his friends who are, their idea of hanging out is studying together, you know? And a lot of his friends are Asian, I wonder why. A lot of his friends and his girlfriend, she's Asian. <laughs> Asian women know they can sniff that money. It's, ooh, cash flow. They can smell it, man. They can smell it. But I feel that so many poor people are getting the wrong advice for going to college. And as a result, this is why you have so many college educated people who are taking somewhat of a hit during this pandemic and the global reset because yes, they have a college degree. Big whoop, but they can't do nothing that someone wants to pay them a lot of money for. They can't do nothing. They can't do nothing, homie. They can't do nothing. And this is one of the reasons that I have created Home Economics. And I want you guys to hear me. There are so many business owners who get money and because they have bad financial habits, bad financial behaviors, they mess up the money because they don't know any better. No one has ever said, look, this is what you need to do. This is how you need to do it. Because uh, essentially, I'm going to extend my time to complete, complete home economics to the first two weeks of April. And one of the things that I want to do, one of the things I want to look at, one of the things I want to initiate and teach, because once again, home economics is going to be the foundational course for everything that I do. And this is why I'm taking my time to get it, you know, just updated and stuff. But once again, if you're poor, and hear me and hear me well, the reason that you have bad credit isn't because you don't make enough money. The reason that you have bad credit is because you have no financial discipline. That's the root of this course. This, that's the root aim of this course. And I don't know what's going on with this YouTuber. I, you know, because once again, I'm not going after anyone. I'm not mentioning names, but this YouTuber is making content that is cracking me up. He made a video that I have made talking about why you shouldn't listen to these YouTubers because um, they have 
they're getting money from you watching their YouTube videos. Like this, I've consistently said this about these financial YouTubers. You cannot listen to them because what they're getting from YouTube, I heard one of them said, you know, he makes so much money, he cannot contribute to a Roth. Neither he nor his wife can contribute to a Roth because their household income is too great. And I know for a fact that's the majority that's YouTube. I know that for a fact. And you know, it, it's just, it, it's just interesting because like he's starting to make kind of videos that I would be making and I don't know what happened to him. I don't know. Cause like I said, I'm not messing with anyone. I'm not calling anyone out. I'm just leaving it alone and just staying in my own lane for now. And um, it's real interesting what is being said, what is being done and what is being put out in the YouTube space. It is crazy. But once again, I just wanted to put that out there because with home economics, it's the preparatory course before you start getting big money. Because if you're tricking off 30,000, you don't trick off 300,000. Because that's who you are. So my goal is to change that. So you can get in home economics, the, the link, the course is below, you can get in. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Tell your children to go for the hard stuff, not for the easy balls. Tell them to go for the hard balls. That's gonna be the best advice you can give them.